Hello friends, welcome to Shiva Academy. This video series is mainly to address the questions and the comments that I am receiving through mail or in the comment section. As a continuation of that, here is a very interesting question that I have received from one of the subscriber. What happens if the cursor is not closed? Of course, when a cursor is not closed, when the session gets terminated or disconnected, the, session, the cursor will get automatically closed. However, whenever we are working on a cursor, it is always recommended to close the cursor if you are not going to use that cursor anymore in future. The reason is, whenever we open a cursor, there is a parameter which will govern the maximum number of cursors that we can open in a session. Let us try to understand with an example. So here is a very simple anonymous block. So I have just declared the cursor and I just opened it. The moment I open the cursor or the moment that open cursor statement get executed, Oracle will create a memory location in the program global area and it will execute the underlying statement and then from that memory location whenever we fetch the cursor Oracle will return the records from that cursor. The moment we close the cursor Oracle will automatically close the cursor and it will release the memory location. However, if you are not closing the cursor what will happen is the memory location will still be there until the session gets terminated or disconnected. Let us try to understand this with an example. So as I told, there is a parameter called open underscore cursors which you can see in the V$ parameter table like uh, you can query from this table and you can see there is a value which says that how many number of cursors that we can open in a session. That means in this environment, in, in my development environment, the value is 50. That means in a session I can open a maximum of 50 uh, cursors. Let us try uh, with an example now. So here is a very simple anonymous block. As I told, I'm just trying to open a cursor. That means if I try to open 50 cursors here without closing any of the previous cursors, then Oracle will not allow me to open any more new cursors. Now let us try to alter the system to reduce this value. However, I will not suggest to execute this particular statement in any of your organization databases because this will impact all the concurrent users. Don't ever try this statement in your dev or QA or in production environment. If at all you want to try, you can try this statement in the database which you have installed in your personal computer. Okay. With that note, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to alter my statement to set the open cursor as five. That means I'll not be able to open a beyond five cursors. Okay. Uh, let me try to open now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a new session. I've just copy pasted the same program. So in this case, it is just trying to open only one cursor. Let us modify the program to open, let's say five or six or seven cursors. Okay. I'm just creating cursor two, cursor three, four, five, six, and seven. So let me change the query also. Let's say four, five, six, seven. That means I have declared seven cursors. Let us try to open these seven cursors now. Okay. So let me change the cursor name to three, four, five, six, and seven. Let me try to execute this anonymous block now. Now, if you can see here, we got an error called maximum open cursors exceeded. That means Oracle will always maintain the maximum number of cursors in a session. And if it exceeds that particular limit, we will get an error. Obviously, in a real time scenario, what will happen is that we'll be opening a cursor in a procedure and that procedure will call another procedure. There probably we might open multiple cursors and it, and it in turn calls some other procedure and there it might open other cursors. So there is a possibility that we might exceed. In that case, Oracle will not execute that program and it will throw this exception. Okay. So now let me try to show you one more example. Instead of opening all this, let's try to close the cursor and then we'll just try to open it. So I, I've just opened the cursor C1 and immediately I close the cursor C1. Then I open the cursor C2 and I close the cursor C2. Same thing goes for C3 cursor. And let me close the C4 cursor. Let me close the C5 cursor also. Let me just keep the C6 and C7 in the open state itself. Let me try to execute this program now. Now if you can see here, the program is successfully completed. That is because we opened the cursor and immediately we closed it. Maybe we opened, we fetched the information and then we are just closing the cursor. So at any point of time, we are not exceeding the maximum limit. That is why it got executed. Okay, now let me show you what are all the other impacts of having the cursor open always. So as I mentioned, right, the moment we open a cursor, it will open a memory location in a PGA that is a program global area and the maximum number of cursors will be 
be maintained by the open curses parameter. The moment it exceeds or the moment the number of curses exceeds this value, we'll be getting an exception called maximum open curses exceeded. Apart from this issue, there are a lot of like performance issue because we'll be keep on opening some curses which will use the memory location and the session blot that is like long running queries, long running sessions with unclosed curses which which will which can accumulate at, and it might affect the stability of the system and sometimes it will even result in the database restarts and sometimes if we open the cursors with like for update class this will potentially lock all the rows selected by the select statement which may impact other session to update or delete or to do any dml operation thereby it may result in a potential blocking or deadlock situations and obviously it will result in a delay in the garbage collection also if you want any questions to be answered, you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail ID. But before that, you can check whether a similar question has already been posted as part of the subscriber question series or as part of the interview question series. If you're not able to find your question, please write back to me. I'll be happy to record and post as a new video. If you've learned something new, please like this video, subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video, interview question, SQL practical question and concept videos. And thanks a lot for watching this video.